Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dragon Bleed by Gilgamesh Games. It plays two to four players, takes roughly about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Dragon Bleed, you are playing as the humans and or the vampires. Vampires are attempting to gather dragon blood to then devour the humans, and the humans are attempting to gather dragon blood to enact sorcery to defeat the vampires. All in all, the game is about tableau management, placing cards from your hand, creating characters, weapons, and dragons together to do damage to your opponents. You all have 500 HP, and if you can reduce your opponents to zero, HP by the end of the game and be the sole survivor left, you are the winner. But beware, there's also going to be mystery dragons that are going to appear as the game goes on, and if you can get all three pieces together and form an attack, you can do a devastating blow to your opponents. Let's take a look at the game, how it's set up, how it's played, and then my review for the game. To set up a game of Dragon Bleed, the first thing you will do is take the player mat and put it out in front of all players. Then take all the player cards, shuffle them, and place them on the character player card deck space. And make sure you play Place out one card from the deck and place it on the right side and one on the left side. You'll take the mystery dragon pieces and formulate them into three separate separate sets. One is going to be for the head, the next is going to be for the body, and the final will be for the bottom portion. Make sure that they're randomly divided and that the mystery side is face up because that is what will be unlocked as the game goes on. You're also going to have dark armory cards. Shuffle those up and place them face down on the dark armory space and then take all of the vials of dragon blood and place them down onto their space. It doesn't matter which way you set them up because they're the same front and back. And the last thing is taking the Nightfall and Daybreak card and placing it down onto the current time of the game. Set the player die, which is going to be used for attacking, aside within reach of all players, and then hand each player a hand of four cards they'll be using for the game. After that, give everybody a player eight and begin the game Dragon Bleed. To begin the game, select a player, and they're going to go. They'll have their four cards in hand, and they can choose to play any thief cards or armory cards that they have. After that, they're going to be able to use these cards called the Time Shift cards, which will change the Nightfall to the Daybreak and the Daybreak to the Nightfall, depending on what they want to do. After that, they're going to go ahead and choose to discard any cards in their hand if they would like to one of the double discard piles or either. And if they do not want the cards, they'll just simply take them and place them down and then draw the appropriate number of cards from the other discard set or, of course, from the top of the player deck. After that, they can take their cards and they're going to place them down onto the section of their player's side. So on my side here, I have a character, I have a weapon, and a dragon space. I can place any number of, uh, uh, the I can place any uh, type of these cards down. But the cards that I want to place are the cards that are going to be of the same type. So for instance, if I want, I can place a vampire queen, and I can play a dragon down. But in order to play a weapon now, the only rule is that the weapon must be of the same type as the character I put down. For vampires, it's going to be vampire weapons, and for humans, it will be a human weapon. And if I do not have one of these cards, then I'm not going to be able to attack. If I did have all three cards, I could then choose to attack, which I'll explain later. Uh, if not, I'm just going to basically be ending my turn. I'll draw back up to my four card hand limit, and then I'm going to be able to play, or I'm going to be able to, I should say, uh, buy any of the dark armory cards. One will always start face up, but if I don't want that one, I could take a different one. And these cards are going to cost vials of dragon blood. And the main way you'll get these is by successfully attacking other players and basically depleting their HP points from their 500. I can use these cards at the beginning of my turn, but I buy them at the end. And if I ever complete any of the requirements on these mystery dragon cards, whether it be the front or the top, the middle or the bottom, I'll flip them over. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to do something with revealing this head here, I could flip it over if a player used a human thief on this specific turn. This card would get flipped over, and I can be basically trying to unlock these dragons. And I want to unlock them on my turn so that I can earn a vial of blood, and I can also use it if I have an attack on that turn for a devastating amount of damage. After that, though, I'll simply pass my turn, and the next player will get a chance to go. They'll play their thief cards, their dark armory cards if they have them, be able to change the nightfall to daybreak, they will then be able to discard cards. They will draw those cards up from the decks here, and then they'll lay cards down. And then after that, they're going to hopefully be able to attack. So let's talk about attacking. So if I have my queen vampire and my dragon there, they're both topaz, um, I'm going to need a vampire weapon. So I'll take this vampire extract from the deck just to give you an example. And basically, I'm going to try to attack my opponents. I have all three that are needed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all of my attack. 
So uh, basically with my attack, I'll be rolling this die and adding any appropriate bonuses. In this case here, because I happen to have two topazes, uh, then I'm going to get a two of a kind bonus, which means I get a plus 20 attack. I'll roll this die here, whatever I get, 50, is gonna be added to my attack bonuses. And in this case, it will be plus 20, which is going to be 70. I can also check to see if the Nightfall card is active because uh, on the Nightfall, uh, st uh, if, it's a, if it's night, I get a plus 20 to attack. So if my 70, it goes to a 90. And it'll also give me plus damage. Now, of course, if it's during the day, I can lose uh, attack. And there's certain rules and requirements based on these cards here that will change how much my attack is and how much my damage is. All other players will roll their die and they'll try and beat whatever my number is. So if I rolled an eight, if I, if I total up 80 or total up 70, they would need to have a 90 or an 80 or above to win. And if they rolled lower, they would take damage. And to take damage, you're gonna simply add up all the cards in front of you, 20 plus 15 plus 10. And then you're gonna add up any bonus damage from set bonuses and any bonus damage from these nightfall cards and possibly even maybe the dark armory as well. And that is the amount of damage each of those players will take, reducing it from their total life points being 500. So if you take 100 from 500, you're down to 400. And that's one way you're limiting the players from the game is reducing them to zero. Another thing to note too is these dragons here. As you complete their objectives, you will start to reveal them. And they also have bonuses because you could uh, get a stone dragon to pop up. And in this case here, this is a triple stone dragon, which means you're gonna be doing an extra 55 plus 45 plus 35 attack damage or uh, damage uh, to your attack. And in addition, because it's a three of a kind, you're gonna add an extra 20 damage and an extra 20 to your attack roll. And this is going to be utilized when you have an attack on your turn. And if you're the last person to flip over the last card, you'll get a vial of blood as well. And then these guys will go away when that happens and then new dragons are going to pop up. These are devastating attacks. These are potentially game winning and like changing attacks that can basically uh, allow you to change the table or to change the tides of the game. And of course, the other way is the vials of blood. These guys here remain in your hand and you'll use them to spend. In order to get these guys, you'll have to perform successful attacks. Uh, also opening up this dragon is another way. And there's going to be these dark armory cards and they'll have a cost on them at the very bottom saying a vial of blood or two vials of blood. If you don't want the card here when buying them, you can buy a separate one from the top of the deck if you can afford it. And they have a variety of uses. Maybe this is going to be a possessed human magus and you can place this on top of your old one to give it a stronger uh, amount of of attack, a stronger amount of damage, or maybe you want to use something like protection. These are like action cards that can be used at the beginning of your turn uh, during gameplay to kind of change the way the game is working. Whenever you discard cards, they go into the master discard pile over here. And whenever this deck runs out, you're going to reshuffle the discard pile and put all the cards back into the deck. The only thing that you're going to not ever put back in the deck is going to be these vials of dragon blood. However, if the dark armory cards go to the discard pile and they go back into this deck and you draw them, you can utilize them which makes it very powerful at the end of the game if you haven't won by then. And that's basically the idea of Dragon Bleed, uh, a powerful uh, game of uh, set collection, of tableau management, and of destroying your opponents utilizing your attack damage. All right, let's talk about my review. So first and foremost, Dragon Bleed is all about creating sets. If you can create a set of a certain type, you're going to be able to do uh, a higher roll, which makes it more likely for you to succeed in an attack, and also gives you a higher amount of damage, which is going to reduce your HP of your opponents by that amount, making it more likely for you to win the game. Another thing to always note is when and it, what time it is. Is it the daytime or is it the nighttime? And that is going to sufficiently advance your amount of damage you're dealing. And it's gonna be based on your characters as well, which I didn't really explain, but if you have a nighttime character, it'll give you that nighttime bonus. If you have a daytime character during daybreak, it'll give you that daytime bonus. And uh, night characters can't attack during the daytime. And so you have to kind of utilize your time shifted cards so that you can basically be able to utilize the cards in front of you uh, for the different times of day. There is no specific advantage to playing as a vampire or as a human. You can play in any combination that you would like. Your objective mainly is to create sets. Utilize those sets to roll high numbers, prevent the opponents from being able to avoid your attack, and then make them suffer huge amounts of damage. If you're ever low on the game or you want to end it quickly, it's time to bring out those mystery dragons. Flipping them over and creating a stone dragon or creating something like a lava dragon or a bone dragon is going to be your best bet. It's going to be random. They could you could get all three in the set. It could be just that you get maybe one of each but it doesn't matter. Those so powerful that they can really change the tide of battle. And because you're attacking all of your opponents, it's something that can really make it so that if you save that card when you want to utilize it, when you've got your whole set out, that's when you can do some devastating blows to the game. The game can be rather quick, can take a little bit of time. It really just depends on how it plays out, what cards you get, and what combinations you utilize. 
Dragon Blood is excellent as well to be able to gather these Dark Armory cards. Uh, these are all very powerful. They can either update your tableau and make them stronger, or give you certain utilities like protection. Use this card when attacking uh, during Daybreak. You must have a Vampire in the slot, and it's going to cost one Vial of Blood. Or Trickery, an extra turn is allowed. Play this card at the beginning of your turn for a total of two turns. So this can give you an extra turn. But it's going to cost you Vials of Blood. You have to have them in order to do so. Maybe you're going to turn your Vampire Lord uh, into a... a big scary vampire or uh, blood rage lord. It's going to let you do specific things. Place this card over the lord slot on your space one, and it's going to give you plus 60 damage and plus 20 to your attack. So these cards can be changing, game winning as well. And of course, going through this deck here is a bunch of varieties of dragons and characters they, uh, that are going to allow you to kind of create the best tableau that you can possibly uh, bring about. This game involves a little bit of luck. You might not have the best starting hand, whereas a player might, but as the game progresses, you're going to be able to kind of create and mold your hand to make it as you see fit. Being able to choose when to flip over these dragon cards, when to successfully attack, how to utilize this day and night card to prevent your opponents from doing a super strong attack is going to be important as well, and just as much as choosing which Dark Armory card to get, whether it be the face-up card, or if it's not worth it, to try and go for something a little more powerful, but there's a risk to that as well. It's all about risk management in this game, and if the game goes on too long, the deck goes back onto the top of the deck, and some new interesting things start popping up, whether it be the Dark Armory cards popping up and going into your hand, um, as well as the more likely the dragons are to come out and inflict their serious amounts of damage. Uh, I would suggest in this game to make sure that you have your uh, like a score sheet or tracker for all of your HP. Another thing to note too is when you play certain types of combos of cards, there's more ways for you to gather more than just four cards into your hand, but you're never going to be limited by less than those four cards in your hand. And always make sure that you save at least a time shift card if you need it to make sure that you can always attack on your turn provided you get the cards that you want, which may or may not be the case. Some players are going to hold cards to prevent these dragons from popping out, uh, but if you do hold on for too long, somebody else might get one of those cards and pop it up on their turn and start scoring some serious damage on you. The game board works great. It fits all the different players sitting all around the table. Now, of course, uh, this specific one, you're going to have to try and make sure that you have type of a square table. Mine is not going to work exactly well for this, uh, but we did play it and it did, just, it did work just fine for this specific table variant, but I think it'd be better on a coffee table in my opinion. Positives as well are the artwork. I love the artwork for this game. I Pretty much all of the games that this guy has come out with, I've really enjoyed the artwork. The, this one is no exception to that rule. The dragons, the vampires, the humans, all the different character weapons are beautifully illustrated and very dark themed, which is exactly what this game is going for. Dragon Bleed is kind of one of those like, attack, take that, but Minimizing luck with tableau management and placement and gathering of certain cards. And there's a whole lot in this game you can do for something that it doesn't seem like there'd be a whole lot that you can do. You think you're just placing out cards and rolling the dice and attacking, but that's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of deception and deduction in this game as well, as you try to deduce who has what in their hand, when they're going to attack, and are they going to change the daybreak to nightbreak and vice versa. Um, I think one thing I'd probably like to see changed in the game is when you roll this die for your attack, if you can get over 100 points. And if that happens, your opponents are just going to take that damage. And if that's the case, I'd prefer to have those D&D rules where if, as long as you roll 100, you're guaranteed to succeed on the defense. And if you ever roll a 10, you're guaranteed to fail the attack. I think that presents a more of an opportunity for players who are defending to withstand an attack that seems almost insurmountable. It seems like there's no way you're possibly going to be able to block all these dragons as well as all these combos that you've got. Well, you roll that 100 and bam, you've saved yourself from basically utter annihilation. Uh, but it's not necessarily a bad thing either because the game does end abruptly when that happens. You can simply just go ahead and play again. But I like those little tense moments in the game. This has a lot of those. Overall, a solid, fun game. This is one I'm gonna keep in my collection, Dragon Bleed. If you like tableau management, if you like games that involve trying to choose combos and combinations of cards and deducing what other players have in their hand, and the ability to use ultimate attacks and ultimate powerful armory cards, then this is one I would suggest you take a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Game board game review for the game Dragon Bleed. If you want to pick this game up, there's a link down below in the description where I think it'll be on Kickstarter. You can also go into our website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Click the link in the description. 
Don't forget to also go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this one. We create new content almost every day, Monday through Friday. And on our Sundays, we have a live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST, sometimes at 5.30, a YouTube stream as well. And that's it, guys. Pretty much all I got for you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to bleeding that dragon with you next time.